Hi there. Welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory. And it's not tunnel vision. It's possibly light at the end of the tunnel. Does it feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel? And does that light seem to warrant giddy irresponsibility? Maybe. Maybe. But I'm still here being responsible, showing up at my allotted time, although I did miss you last week and I apologize for that. But I'm back and uh, in fine fettle. So I'm glad that you're here too. So it feels like things are changing. You know, Jenny and I realized this weekend that March 10th, which is the date of our um, second vaccination, second and hopefully final vaccination, is also the anniversary of one year since we left New York on our ill-fated trip to Palm Springs, which resulted in kind of our life being completely disrupted as the pandemic erupted and we ended up in Phoenix. And here we are a year later, one year. Amazing. <clears throat> so yes, so it feels like there are things that could be changing. It feels like there could be um, reasons to be optimistic, but that doesn't mean that we should stop drawing. So hopefully you're ready to do some to do some drawing with me today. Um, I want to tell you about a couple of interesting things in the meantime um, that are that are coming up that I think you might enjoy. So this is a thing that um, I wanted to let you know about, which is Sketchbook Revival. Sketchbook Revival is an annual uh, event that. Um, is very interesting and is free. It's free. We have sponsored it. Um, I think this is the fourth one. I think we've sponsored it three times. So we're sponsoring it this year. And um, Karen is an artist based in Italy, although well, she's an American. And she puts together this event where she brings in all these different artists to talk about how you can get back into making art. And um, there's all different kinds of interviews and uh, discussions and events, and it's free. And you can sign up by just clicking this link. Well, not click, you can't click it because it's on a YouTube screen, but just type in bit.ly.com slash Danny SBR, and you can sign up for it. As I said, free, full of interesting, fun stuff that will, you know, even if you are working in your sketchbook, you'll get new ideas because there's so many cool and interesting artists who are participating in it and presenting and being interviewed, including yours truly. Um, so yes, I see Karen has signed up for it for the third time. Congratulations, Karen. That is awesome. Yes, it is really fun. And I hope you all get something out of it. Um, Kosha, can you believe it? It's yet again time for Sketchbook Revival. Yep, it's pretty fun. So I had a fun time talking to Karen about it. And uh, I see a lot of folks are aware of it and um, are part of it. So that's great. That's very nice. Um, so yes, so Sketchbook Revival, please do join us for that. Um, and also this weekend, Paint a Pub, which is a brand new, very, very juicy, dare I say it, um, uh, workshop with Ian Fennelly. So Ian uh, is just a favorite of ours at Sketchbook School. We love the quality and style of his drawing. We love the way that he teaches. He's just our favorite Liverpudlian. And he's going to be teaching us to paint uh, a pub in his neighborhood. Um, but he's also going to be teaching us the fundamentals of urban sketching. And it's time to hone your fundamentals, people, because again, light at the end of the tunnel, get out of your house, get out there, start doing some urban sketching. If you don't know much about it, Ian's going to teach you how to use watercolor markers, um, watercolor, comma, markers, comma, watercolor markers, comma, fine liners and various other things, but also just how to approach an urban sketching 
subject. How do you figure out what you should draw, what matters? How do you tell the story? How do you clarify? How do you simplify? Those are all skills that it's a lot more than just plonking yourself down on a folding stool and drawing whatever's in front of you. There's an art to it, and Ian is a great artist. Here's a cool thing about this particular workshop. Ian made this beautiful painting during the course of making the workshop. We're giving it away. So if you sign up for it, you'll be in the uh, running to get the original that Ian paints. Another cool thing about this is as soon as you sign up, you'll have access to the videos. At this point, it doesn't matter as much because the workshop itself is on Saturday. But just so you know, this is what we want to do in the future. If you sign up for a workshop, you'll watch the videos during the workshop itself, but you also have access to them earlier. So if you want to kind of watch them and then watch them again and have your questions ready, if you want to prepare, you can. If you don't want to, you want to just show up and do it, you can. But now they'll all be in your sketchbook school library, all the files immediately as soon as you sign up. So hopefully that will help us with one of the things that we struggle with in this, which is how do you keep up. How do you watch and draw at the same time? Well, this way you can re-watch and draw at the same time or watch later or whatever you want to. Um, what else? I also noticed that um, that Alexis has put up this, which is um, a blog post that we just did about essential supplies for urban sketching. It's different than the supply list for this workshop. That you'll get when you sign up. But this is just, what does Ian think are good things to... Uh, to have in your kit. So if you look in the comments, that will be there. And if you're watching this as a recording, hopefully you could go back and freeze frame that because that thing just did disappear pretty quickly. But this is going to be fun. It's going to be an opportunity to go to a pub. Hello, when was the last time you did that? And draw. And it's going to be, you know, as, as they always are with Ian, lucid, entertaining, informative, uh, you know, and life-changing in some ways. So yes, yeah, so that's exciting. That is what we have on the docket for this. You know, um, and is there anything else that I should be saying about this pub workshop? No, I think that it's, it is, you know, we keep making these workshops better, honestly. We keep having new insights based on the feedback that we get from you guys. So I think, you know, increasingly, as those of you who were here for the last one with Chris Kaler drawing with a brush know, the, we're getting people who are special, who are um, highly experienced workshop leaders, not just random artists, not just anybody who has a webcam, but people who really teach really great workshops. And those that's who we're looking for, and we're finding more and more of them. Um, so when I look down the line at the ones we have coming up, it's next level, I think. So if you've never had an experience of coming to one of our workshops, try it. It's kind of like Draw With Me, except way better because it's not just me but it's somebody who knows what they're doing teaching you but it's still the communal feeling of being with a bunch of people hanging out and getting questions and feedback that's that's a, such an essential part of our workshops right it's like you get to ask the teacher live anything you want and they'll probably answer depending on what the question is of course um, but also you can participate in a feedback session where you take your pub send it to ian and Ian will, on Sunday, talk about whatever it is you want him to talk about regarding your particular piece. So anyway, I'm in the mindset now. What with the end of the tunnel and what with um, pubbing to think about getting out there and drawing again? Man, you know, my friend Tommy Kane was posting a bunch of things on Instagram recently where he was going on virtual vacations and painting showing drawings of stuff that he was fantasizing about. I thought that was a really cool thing. Uh, and at Sketchable School, is, I think it's part of just, is it part of Spark or is it part of Sketchable School and Schoolyard in general? People are going and visiting each other virtually. This is such a cool thing where they go and see the other person's hometown and vice versa, all doing it online. So it's really fun and uh, really gonna be great. So so hopefully you will all join Melly Willie and uh, join us for classes and workshops and stuff like that. It will be cool. All right, good. So let's talk about what we're gonna do today now that we have all this lined up. Um, so, okay, 
So first of all, here is a link to the reference stuff we're going to use today. You don't need it, really. I wouldn't worry about it. It's not essential, but it is there if you want to. So write it down, DW, DWM, draw with me, 86. What does 86 mean? It doesn't mean sex when you're 80. I mean, that's a different show. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure where that came from. Um, it. <laughs> What it means instead is we're going to go around the world in 80 second increments. We're going to do a bunch of really fast drawings of global landmarks. Just to kind of get, get back into it, right? It's time to get back into it. So I need to set up my timer on my phone so that we can have accountability. But you, meanwhile, have to get your gear together. Get your paper, get your, probably a pen will be fine, but you can do it however you want to. But the idea is we are going to do 10 landmarks each in 80 seconds. You could do all 10 in 80, of 80 seconds, but I wouldn't. I would do each one for, eight, work on each one for 80 seconds. And uh, if you want to spend longer, be my guest if you want to spend less time. Be my guest. I probably will end up spending less time because that's just the way I roll. But um, yeah, so we need a minute and 20 seconds. That's what it's going to be. And, um, you know, interpret it. That's the idea is to interpret it. Do it however you want to do. How are you going to attack something quickly? Knock it out. What's the tool you're going to use? I think I will use my brush pen. Because I'm just into brush pens this, today, this, these days, and they work quickly. I have to tell you, I was planning to work in my sketchbook, and I had prepared um, a nice page where I'd painted it in gouache, because I was going to work on a nice white surface. And then, literally, 80 seconds before this program began, I jog joggled my sketchbook school mug with my elbow and managed to splash some coffee onto the page. I know you're saying, roll with it, Gregory. It's cool. You have coffee there. No, it's kind of moist. I'm setting it aside. Maybe I'll work on it later on. Instead, I'm going to just work on regular old paper. Some, uh, what is this? Vellum Bristol. Okay. So let's move over and have a look at the desk. Here we go. So here, there's the timer. Here's various cables that I'm going to get out of the way. Um, and let's move this here. Have a look at the piece of paper. And there's our first landmark. Does everybody know what this is? Of course you do. It's the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. So let's try it. Let's see if we can do in 80 seconds. Don't start yet. No cheating. I'm organizing my pens here. I need a moment. Um, my timer has disappeared. Here it is. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Do I hear any squealing anxiety in the, in the audience? No. Let's go. Kosha. I'm counting on you to make something amazing here. No, no pressure. We can all do whatever we want. Ready? Golden Gate Bridge. 80 seconds on the timer. Just work quickly. Don't think about it. Don't be, uh, you know. Well, I can't draw perspective. Oh, wait. Uh, uh. No, we're not doing that today. We're just knocking it out. Nobody's going to be grading you. Except the monkey. Nobody cares whether this is any good or not. But it's going to be good. Because nobody cares if it's going to be good or not. It's the key thing. The fact that I made this back one too big isn't a problem because you still know, my God, that's an extraordinarily accurate drawing of the Golden Gate Bridge. My God, this guy's good. <laughs> yes. It's looking good. Come on. 
I don't hear applause, but I'll just take it. You're, you're, you're too busy drawing to applaud this extraordinary accomplishment. All right, there's the timer. We're done. All right, thank you, timer. We good? So don't worry, this, is a, this appears very large. It's not actually, as you can see, here's my whole page. It's not big. It's not a big drawing. I wanna try and fit all 10 of these on this page. Ready? Okay, let's move on. Huh? Jesus, that's good. Okay, so this is Brazil, Rio, right? What is it, Sugarloaf, is that what it's called? I forget, but this is Christ the Redeemer. And uh, it's hard to actually find this angle, by the way. Most of the pictures of this uh, huge sculpture are um, are from the other side. So, but I wanted to see his face. You know, I, didn't, I didn't want him turning his back on me. So, so there you have it. Um, whoops, I didn't start the timer. Okay, I have now. So you you got an extra few seconds to uh, tackle this subject. Yeah, it's interesting because I wanted to have, when I was doing a little bit of what I laughingly call research into what we should be drawing, what events, and I thought, like, what are landmarks in South America? I, I mean, I could, all I could think of was this one and Machu Picchu. I mean, I'm sure there are more, but I, it's, you know, it just didn't, didn't strike me. So, um, yeah. So if you... I mean, these have to be like, you know, really well-known ones, right? It can't just be, oh, yes, my grandmother's house in... No. We want them to be... What's the idea behind this whole assignment, you ask? Um, the idea is that we're spanning the world spanning the world so uh that's it that's the idea all right that's it that's the timer here we go ready next swing ah yes the taj mahal where am i gonna put him i guess you know these these first guys are going to get room. They're getting room on the page. They don't have to compete. Later on, we'll see what happens. But these guys, they get... I have, I have been to India. I grew up in Pakistan, so I'm familiar with it, but I've never been to the Taj Mahal. But one can only imagine what it's like. I mean... One can imagine what it's like. It's, it's, I think, a very, very cool place. I mean, it's, it's just a beautiful idea. You know, it's a testament to love. It was built by a Maharaja. Originally, I forget who he, what his name was, but originally there were going to be two of them. A white one, like this one. Well, this one, actually. And uh, a black one. And the Maharaj, this was where the Maharani was buried. And there was going to be one across the water where the Maharaja was going to be buried. Oh no, I didn't finish it. All right, I'm going to quickly cheat. Cheat? Yes, I got right already. I'm cheating. I just need to put this in because it won't look like the thing at all. Okay. All right, as you can see, too much talking. Next! Oh my god. What is the next one? Okay, okay, Burj Khalifa. Do you know what this is? I think, I'm not sure if this is still, but it was, for a while at least, the tallest building in the world in uh, Dubai. I've actually had cocktails at the top of this thing. It is not only the tallest uh, cocktail lounge in the world, it's probably the most expensive one. I mean, I went with some advertising clients there weren't very many of us, three or four, I think. 
We managed to spend eight hundred dollars for you know a couple rounds of drinks and some nibblies. So, not my money. But even so, come on. But that's Dubai. It's a crazy place. Crazy. So yeah, and then there's some kind of bits down at the bottom here too. So we'll merge it with whatever that mountain is called in Brazil. And that's kind of it. All right. There we have it. Burj Khalifa. It's very tall and thin, as you can see. All right, thank you, timer. Oh my God, here we go. Let's do, an, let's do the next one. What are we gonna do? Let's do it down here. My coffee is still threatening. Okay, I got it, I got it. Here we go. Next one. Oh. Yep, this seems like a bit of a challenge, doesn't it? Let's start with the face. And are we gonna be able to show how it's kind of disintegrating? That's the challenge. The Sphinx, outside of Cairo. Again, how many landmarks can one think of in Africa? You know, certainly this is one of them, but what else? What else would you think of? And we've got to have a pyramid or two in the background. And then we've got to do these kind of lines that go across. Mm -hmm. You can tell what that is. That's, that's good enough. You can tell what it is. You know, you might not be overly impressed, but that's okay. I'm not here to impress you. I'm here to draw. You're here to impress me, aren't you? No, you're here to draw too. Here we go. Sphinx. All right. <sighs> I need to have some coffee. If we're going to work at this speed. All right, ready for the next one? You guys are working along with me, aren't you? I know you are. I will be checking. I'll be coming by to check what you're doing. Here we go. Next. Hmm. All right. I mean, this is why you why why is the timer still going? Okay. Oof, damn it. All right. So yeah, Easter Island, mysterious sculptures that uh, I think they're mysterious, right? I think I mean they're obviously they look mysterious, but I think they're also mysterious as in what the hell were they about? What is the point of these things? Why were they there? I think it's pretty obvious why they were there, because they're cool as hell. It's giant sculptures. God knows how they were made, but they're very imposing and expressive and kind of funny. And uh, also designed really beautifully to, to use the light, I think. We think of the Sphinx as being emblematic of this sort of pretty sophisticated sophisticated um, culture, but then Eastern, Easter Island, where, you know, kind of also an impressive accomplishment um, as a piece of art, but we don't really know anything about it. So, all right, there you go. <sighs> yes, Seydoul, please don't, please don't bother. All right, here we go, next. Ninety seconds. Including adjusting the camera. The Sydney Opera House. We filmed a class not far from this at Sketchbook School uh, with Liz Steele. She traveled past this and I think, did she draw it? Not really, but sure she has drawn it. It's now part of our 
urban sketching class. So if you're interested in urban, urban sketching, that's your class. Yes, indeed. Um, and uh, if you're interested in other things, well, you know, let me just make a brief reference to Spark, which is our our very cool membership thing, which I know a lot of you are members of already, but Spark gives you access to this class and you can be studying up endlessly watching all of these classes, including Ian's workshop on urban sketching. So yeah, I don't think I caught the grace of this building at all because it's supposed to look like uh, ships and sails, but no, you sort of vaguely know what it is, right? Good enough. Good enough for 80 seconds. There we go. All right. <laughs> uh, here we go. What do we got? Uh, all right. Tower Bridge. Put it in here. Hey, hey, we got it ready. This is a tough one to do in 80 seconds. So I'm just not going to tell myself that. I'm just going to do it because I know that you're out there doing it. And you're like, what are you complaining about? It's pretty easy. Just going to do that cool drawbridge thing. Man, that thing is cool. And uh, yeah, draw that bit. And uh, maybe draw some bits coming off here. And uh, there it is. And then we've got this. And then we've got these cables coming down here. And we've got the roadway. And there's that. Um, yeah, breathtaking likeness. Awesome. Another high quality production. There we go. And there's some bits that come down there. Yeah, yeah. I'm Because I was so anxious, racing so fast, I'm actually making really good time on this one. I hope you are too. London Bridge is falling down. This isn't London Bridge, though. Tower Bridge. It's in London. It's a bridge in London, but it's not the London Bridge. All right. Okay. I'm going to take a breather. That almost killed me. Let's take advantage of this real estate down here. Another London landmark. Large Benjamin. I actually, I remember drawing this when I was in London. A very, very complex building, actually. Yeah. And uh, how's the parliament there and all? Yeah, and you're sort of standing on a bridge. That's kind of the only way to do it, really, because it's right on the Thames. So it's not, it's not the ideal drawing environment. But, you know, people have been drawing and painting this thing for a long time. So they can do it, we can do it. And... Uh, Good. How's the parliament? On the Thames. And uh, yeah, kind of disintegrated a bit there, but good enough. All right, this is one of those things where you look at it and you go, uh, it's kind of cool as an aggregation. You know, of all the things, Chris is asking about the uh, the bridge in London that was moved to Arizona. Was it Arizona or was it Texas? It might have been Arizona. Um, yes, that's London Bridge. Somebody bought bought it and moved it stone by stone over here. Yeah. So yes, yes, my my smart wife has corrupt confirmed it, so it must be true. Okay, here we go. Now, what's next? The Tour Eiffel. Yes. I actually drew it not long ago. I'm going to draw it down here. 
I drew it uh, on our last trip. Remember that? Yes, we went to Paris and to south of, to the Normandy, and not Normandy, but Brittany, and uh, Amsterdam for, among other things, the Urban Sketching Symposium. And we had a really good party. Sketchbook School knows how to party, let me tell you. So yeah, we had a party. And uh, I've never been up this thing. I don't particularly need to. But uh, I have drawn it a few times, so. All right, there we go, Eiffel Tower next. Mm. Colosseum, let's draw it up here. This I've been to numbers of times. I've been inside of it. It's a very cool place because you can't help but think about like what was going on in here. You know, what kinds of crazy, barbaric things did people come and watch in this place? Like, and there it is also, like in the middle of Rome. I mean, there's a giant road that goes right by it. It's not, it's not out in like the, uh, you know, archaeology section. That's the cool thing about Rome is like, there's ruins like right there, right there. Like, you, you know, you buy a tuna sandwich and you're sitting there. Uh, eating it next to these incredible historical things. And this is one of them. This crazy, crazy Colosseum. There you go. Not ideal placement, kind of encroaching on Easter Island there, but whatever. We'll figure out something else to do with this later on. Like maybe color it, maybe write some stuff. We'll see. All right, thank you. Hey, actually beat the clock this time. Whoo, here we go. Kosha, this one's for you. Where's it gonna go though? Where's it gonna go? Okay, up here. Only vaguely seen these in real life. I mean, I've been to Amsterdam, I don't know, half a dozen times. We never get around to going out to the park. I mean, there's actually, there's, there is one that we actually saw in Amsterdam, not far from our house last time. But in general, they're out by the uh, tulip fields, the tulip field area, neighborhood. Um, so, you know, they're not kind of everywhere. But, but the one that was in the middle of town was kind of cool. I forget where that was. But, uh, yeah, I like this has, one has a balcony, too. So, yeah, so that's, that's iconic, right? That says, that says Amsterdam, although nowadays there's all kinds of windmills everywhere, but they have a different function, but yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty fast, I know, but I'm drawing with this, this pen is, um, you know, it's waterproof ink, so I'm going to be going in and knocking some cool stuff later on. Maybe not in this actual program today, but I will be doing it soon. Okay. All right, here we go. Sorry, my timer. Guys, this is the last one. We've actually gone around the world in 80 seconds. I think I'm going to place it down here because I don't remember what it is. I hope I don't regret it. I hope it's horizontal. Let's take a sip and see. It isn't. <laughs> All right, but I'll make it lean even more so it'll fit. See, that's creativity. This I've also seen in real life. It's not very big. It's kind of surprisingly not very big. But, um, yeah, it's barely, it's, but it's too big to fit on the corner of my page here. So, oh, well, but I've, I've, stre I've stretched it out and I've done this thing. Yeah, so this is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Well, I don't think it was designed to lean. I think it just did lean. 
Isn't there some sort of story, probably apocryphal, about like Galileo dropping a ball off the top of it and it kind of went down and that's how he discovered the forces of gravity or proved them or something? I don't know. As I say, probably apocryphal. But there you have it. Okay. Pens down. Boy, it's a big world. I can barely fit it on the on the screen. Okay, so here's what I plan to do. Probably is I want to write in here. I'm going to write stuff about my memories of these various things or my desires to see them. I'm going to add some hits of color, probably keep it a limited palette, because a lot of these things are not very colorful. They're mainly sort of stone colored, gray, white, silver, dark brown. So neutral colors, maybe I'll do it in, I don't know, I have a, a nice walnut ink. I could use that. So I might do the whole thing in browns and whites, and then I might write in here with black. But I'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting project to continue working on. And we will. So yeah. So if you've been working on it, I would love to see your landmarks. Once you're done with them and you've taken a photograph of them and you've shared them on social media, you could share them on Facebook, you could share them on Instagram, you could share them on probably Twitter, I guess. You could share them on, uh, I don't know, TikTok. You'd pick whatever you want to share it and we'll go around and try and find them. But also share on the schoolyard because by now I know you're a member of the, of the Sketchbook School Schoolyard and you will be sharing it there. So, so um, you know, 80 seconds to do the drawing, but you have more than 80 seconds if you want to continue to work in it and embellish it and do stuff like that. Um, so yes, so wherever you do it, tag it. <laughs> tag it, SBS Draw With Me. That way we can find it. And uh, normally at the beginning of each episode, we show all the drawings that were done the week before. So we will include your thing there. Whew, I'm kind of winded from that global voyage. That was exciting. That was fun. Around the world in 80 seconds. I woke up in the middle of the night with this idea. Like at the beginning of the week, I was like, hey, around the world in 80 seconds. What does that even mean? <laughs> now I know what it means. So yeah. So if you're a member of... Uh, Spark, I'll see you in the Draw With Me after party where we'll hang out and we'll do some stuff. We're going to be doing some fun things today, including giving away some stuff. So if you uh, are not, I'll see you next week and we'll do something else fun and cool. And, you know, here's the thing. Drawing is just fun. It doesn't matter whether you do it well. All that matters is that you enjoy doing it. If you enjoy doing it, you'll do it more often. If you do it more often, your skills will develop. Your ability to see will develop. Your ability to use the tools that you've been buying for months and years and hoarding in the cupboard will develop. And, you know, that's all good. That's not the real point, though. The point is to think back years and decades to when you were six or seven years old sitting at the kitchen table while your mom cooked dinner and you had crayons and you were just drawing. That's what we want to get back to, that feeling, you know? And you do that on a regular basis. Maybe your mom's not around to, to cook dinner for you anymore, but, you know, you can still have that attitude towards drawing, and that's what I want you to do. Um, Jen Cahill, if you're watching this, happy birthday. But you're probably not watching this because you're celebrating your birthday, but... Thanks for being part of Sketchbook School. Um, and uh, the rest of you, have fun. Keep drawing. And uh, meet me next week. We'll figure out something cool to do. I'll see you then. All right? Thank you. And thanks for drawing with me. <gasps> Wait, here's Twiggy. Dun, 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 flying in like super dog to say, um, to say what? Oh. Come to paint a pug. Come to paint a pug. Not paint a pug, but paint a pug. And... Uh, Oh, by the way, subscribe to this channel. Here's what happens when you subscribe. You get a free tote bag. No, you don't. But you do get reminded that there's another draw with me next week. And if you click the bell, 
YouTube will find you and tell you, right? That it's time to come. Yes, she's exhausted too. It's exhausting watching somebody else do this, right? So anyway, here's Twiggy saying bye-bye. See you next time. Thanks for joining me and thanks for drawing.